Hi, everyone. I'm Craig McKenzie. I'm the tech lead of the Elastic Agent team here at Elastic. And today I'm going to walk you through the evolution of the Elastic Agent architecture, talking about how the agent started, some changes we made in 8.6, and some other big changes we have coming up. So I'll start with some history. To understand the Elastic Agent, you first have to understand Beats. So Beats are a variety of data collectors, file beat, metric beat, packet beat, you can install on your system to get whatever data you need. Now, beats are great, but the inconvenient part is if you have logs, metrics, packet flows you want to collect, you have to install, set up, and manage multiple processes on each individual machine you have. This slide shows what happens when you have three hosts. Majority of people have far more than three computers. So we tried to simplify this situation by introducing the Elastic Agent which gives you one agent, a single configuration file, and remote management with fleet out of the box. Which I'm sure many of you are already familiar with. So that out of the way, we'll jump into the internals of the Elastic Agent, and I'll walk through how it works and how we're changing it. So we'll just dive right into the architecture. So the Elastic Agent is a process supervisor, and its primary job when we first implemented it was to be a process supervisor for beats, so much so that it encoded specific knowledge about how to run beats into itself. So start here. The agent always starts with an agent policy, allows you to configure an output destination and a collection of inputs. In this example, we have a file stream input with two different data streams, one for system auth logs and one for system syslog. So the agent begins by reading this configuration file. And the first thing that it does is figures out the mapping of the inputs to the processes that it needs to start. So inside the agent, it knows that an instance of the file stream input type maps to an instance of the file beat process. Um, it additionally has rules internally to generate a beat configuration file from the agent policy, which is shown over here. It looks almost exactly like what you would write by hand. You were configuring file beat to run two file stream input instances. In this case, we have one file stream input in the agent policy where each data stream generates an instance of the file stream input in file B. And we've additionally generated some processors to enrich the data output by file B to be compatible with agent. So we include the target data stream, some additional metadata, um, that type of thing. Um, so now that we've got the configuration file and the agent internally, somehow known to start file beat, which I'll get to later in the presentation. Um, the agent launches file beat as a subprocess. Agent implements a subprocess operator, operates on a control loop driven by what we call agent control protocol, which just operates over gRPC. Um, so what happens when file beat launches under agent is the agent configures it with a command line argument telling it is being managed by agent and file beat will be given the destination for a gRPC server and start an agent control protocol client that every 30 seconds is expected to connect back to the agent subprocess operator and tell it its observed state, which always includes the current state of the process, either healthy, degraded, or failed, and then its current configuration. First time file beat is run, the current configuration will be empty. The agent's job here is to drive the observed state to the expected state. So seeing an empty configuration agent will send it the generated beat configuration, at which point the beat will apply the configuration essentially the same way it would if you had written this configuration by hand. Um, and then every 30 seconds, file beat keeps checking in, looking for new configuration updates uh, and posting its current status. Um, so at this point, file beat isn't all that dissimilar from what you would write by self, except we've introduced the agent as a process manager. So one thing that I should highlight is that the status reporting at this point is per process. So file beat reports file beat process level global status for every input that it runs, which we've come to learn is a giant flaw in this architecture because there's no concept of an integration anywhere in this model. When something goes wrong, all you'll see is the agent isn't healthy or file beat isn't healthy, which generally is not helpful because you probably installed an integration or maybe you are using a standalone agent and you've written a collection of inputs 
that you care about. Right now, you have no way to map the health of the agent back to what has actually happened. So starting in 8.6, we have completely changed the process model of the agent to try to drive it to have a more obvious mapping back to integrations. So there's a lot to take in in this slide. I'll walk you through it. So first big change is that rather than starting every input that FileBeat could run in a single instance of the FileBeat process or metric B process, um, we now always start an instance of the running process for each unique input type. So before 8.6, if you had two file stream inputs and one syslog input, you would get a single instance of FileBeat that was running all three inputs. In 8.6, you now get an instance of FileBeat that only runs file stream inputs and in a second instance that only runs syslog inputs. And the reason we did this has two purposes. One is fault isolation between different input types. If syslog fails, which shouldn't happen, then file stream is unaffected. And the second reason is when the agent collects CPU, memory metrics, and general performance metrics from these processes, we get a much better view into where the CPU used by agent is going. You can now say something like file stream log collection is using the majority of CPU, rather than file beat is using the majority of CPU, which can be any of the inputs that it started. Now, the second big change we made is to stop reporting state per process. Instead, we report state per unit. Per unit is an abstraction for a unit of configuration from the agent policy. So the important section here is this, which takes an extremely simple agent policy that starts a system metrics input and describes how the agent divides it into units for status reporting purposes. So here we have a single output unit and a single input unit. Um, so the output unit and the input unit in this case can now both report their state individually. Every process now reports state on a per unit basis, which means we can do something like say, the Elasticsearch output unit of the system metrics input is degraded because it hasn't published any metrics for the previous 30 seconds. Or the file stream input unit of the file beat process has failed because it was unable to access the log files it was configured to monitor. Um, this gives us a much, much better reporting resolution where we can immediately surface errors. Um, and fleet managed agents always have meta information describing which package was the source of a particular input in the agent policy. So we can map back the input states directly to the integration. The one catch here is in 8.6, we only put this infrastructure in the agent itself. It now publishes a very detailed health report to flee, but we're still working through how to present this information in the UI in a nice way. So that's coming soon. Specifically, what the agent reports to fleet looks a lot like this. There's a list of components. In the new process model, we refer to processes as components as a way of abstracting them. The agent can run many different types of things. Uh, processes that launches as sub-processes, uh, individual services it installs in the host system, and in the future, there may be more things than that. Um, so this is an example of the health report where you can see for each component, which is a process, there is an entry for each one. So in this case, the ID is system slash metrics dash default, which is just the name of the input type concatenated together with the output name. And then there's a unit where the unit is similar. So system metrics dash default is the output unit. System metrics dash default dash CPU metrics is the input unit where the ID suffix is used here. So this says system metrics default CPU metrics because it's the system metrics input using the default output. And this instance of the system metrics input has the ID CPU metrics. If you run the elastic agent status dash dash output JSON command, you'll see this today if you run an 8.6 agent. Now, that's not the only problem we have to solve. We've learned that tuning the output on Elastic Agent can be extremely challenging in high data volume situations. So there is a very unintuitive mapping from the agent policy to what actually gets configured and it's extremely hard to optimize. So we'll take as an example, an output configured in an agent policy. You have file beat, metric beat, and packet beat because you wanna collect logs, metrics, 
and NetFlow, for example. In this case, you found that your NetFlow capture is extremely high volume and you need to tune the output to get it to perform well. So you'll do something like configure the worker count to two, which means that there should be two connections to Elasticsearch for this output. However, what actually happens is you end up with six connections because this configuration applies to each supervised process, each beat. You have no real way without this explanation of how the agent works to know which beats are going to be started or how many of them are. And the output configuration is lying to you. You said there should be two, there's actually six. If you added, say, the audit integration, there would be eight. The same problem applies to configuring parameters like the max bulk size, which controls how large each request to Elasticsearch is when we use the bulk API. You may find that an extremely high volume data source needs a larger bulk size for efficiency reasons, but you could also have lower volume log sources in the same agent, or that introduces unacceptable latency. And you can't tune it for data stream or per process. You can only tune it globally for everything. It makes life extremely challenging. Similarly, you can't tune the queue. And even if you could, you could say something like, I want 100 megabytes of memory queue. The output policy would similarly lie to you because in this example, you would get 300 megabytes of memory queue. And finally, there's no easy way for us to implement global processing. It looks simple in this example because I've only shown beats, but the agent supervises things that are not beats, like our Elastic Defend integration. That is not a beat, it's a security application that runs as a separate service, does not implement any processors from LibB. If you wanted a global processor, let's say to add a company ID or tenant information to every piece of data output by agent, you can't do it right now. So taking all that into account, you come up with a solution. And that is to introduce what we're calling the data shipper, where the fundamental idea is to take the beats as they are today, and cut them in half, where the input component of each beat stays as it is today, but the output pipeline, which consists of the processors, the memory queue, and the output, gets extracted into a separate process called the data shipper, where in the agent policy, each output that you define is an instance of the data shipper process. And you can configure the processors, the memory queue, and the output for that specific process. This means that when you have a single output and you say, I want two connections to Elasticsearch, you actually get it. It makes it possible to configure the queue size in an obvious way. If you say there should be 40, 96 events in the memory queue, that's actually what will happen. Furthermore, when you have multiple outputs, there will be multiple instances of the shipper process. So you will be able to route data to outputs with different performance characteristics or even different queue types in the future. And it allows a very simple implementation of global processing because all data from a particular input flows through the data shipper and the processors will apply to all of it at once regardless of the process it originated from. So we're actively working on this and performance testing it now. It's coming soon. Finally, we have made the Elastic Agent significantly more extensible. It no longer encodes any information about the processes that it supervises. The input to process mapping, what processes to start for which inputs is completely controlled by configuration that is packaged with the agent. So I'll give you an example. We'll walk through how the agent in 8.6 knows to start metric B for the system metrics output. We'll start over here. So if you were to look into the agent installation directory for the 8.62 agent, there's a component subdirectory, which contains all the binaries the agent can start, along with the reference configuration, and also a .spec file. The contents of this spec file are over here. And what it describes is a list of inputs that that binary implements, what platforms it's supported on, what outputs it supports, whether or not it supports the data shipper, what command line arguments we should pass when we start it. For example, this management.enabled equals true signals to a beat that it's running under agent, it should connect to the gRPC server for the control protocol. Um, and there is a direct mapping between the input names in the specification file to the input type in an agent policy. So when an agent starts up, it reads the contents of the spec files in this directory and builds a mapping of processes based on the spec file names. The spec file name must match the binary name. 
and the inputs it implements. The next thing that happens is the agent reads the agent policy. And when it encounters an input with type system metrics, it can consult its mapping from the spec files and see that it should start an instance of metric B. And it knows what command line arguments to pass to it, what configurations it supports, and this is all driven by configuration. So the hope is that eventually we can more easily enable writing new inputs for the Elastic agent, possibly even from outside Elastic itself. So to recap, what we have in 8.6 is a completely new agent architecture with an integration-oriented process model. We're planning to greatly simplify output configuration and make performance tuning much easier with a what you see is what you get mapping between the output and input configuration to what the agent actually does. And finally, we've made the architecture significantly more extensible, um, allowing new inputs to be developed without modifying the elastication itself. So thank you all for attending today. I hope this was helpful.